Hello everyone, uh, I am Rupa uh, from Mysore School of Architecture. Uh, so today I am I will be taking uh, a session on uh, module 5 of water supply and uh, sanitation building services 1. So it covers uh, majorly two topics that is one is fire and life safety and the other one is uh, special services. So we we'll look into the fire and life safety first. In module 5 we have these two major topics that is 8th one introduction to fire and life safety uh, which covers causes of fire, reasons for loss of life due to fire, development of fire, fire classification of buildings, fire water storage requirements, fire control room, code of practices, idea of smoke detectors, fire, alarm, fire alarms, vitrizers, fire escape staircase, equipment used like example snorkel order, materials used to fight fire, fire rating and hydrants. So like this we will see different uh, kind of application for rescuing the occupants in the buildings in the case of fire. Okay. So the second uh, uh, portion of this is uh, special requirements. In that we have uh, solar hot water generation, central LPG supply system, medical gases supply, storage of high speed diesel, central vacuum and waste collection. Though these looks like uh, huge topics but what we are looking at is how it can at building level what are the uh, intervention of these things with respect to the plumbing and sanitation. So we will go to the first topic. Fire and life safety. So now we know that uh, fire and life safety is very important for uh, any type of structures. So fire and life sa safety deals with safeguarding the occupants. The main importance is given for safeguarding the occupants of the buildings or uh, institution or any settlements of an establishment from harm, prevention of uh, property loss by fire and life safety steps. Fire and life safety is to reduce injury, life loss and property loss by advancing the field of fire prevention and life safety with leadership and vision for fire safety professionals. So the main aim is to for safeguarding the occupants and also reduce the injury, life loss, property loss etc. in the event of the fire. So fire, uh, now we will see what is fire, what makes occupants feel uneasy during the cause of uh, fire, event of fire and how it can be protected in the structure. So, uh, so for that we need to understand what is fire, fire is basically it is a chemical reaction, it is a chemical reaction in which a combustible material, any combustible, this is a basic science which we all know, but uh, to uh, make it clear, it is a chemical reaction in which a combustible material combines with oxygen in the atmosphere to give out heat and flame. So when the fire happens, what happens, any combustible materials is supposed to be there for fire to happen. So in that case with the fuel. So after the fire occurs, it combines with the oxygen in the atmosphere which gives out heat and flame. So that could be one definition of fire, fire, what is fire? Fire is also a combustion accompanied by flame or glow which escapes its normal confines to cause damage. Fire is the heat and light of burning. Basically, when we say fire, it is the heat which we have to handle and the uh, smoke which is coming out from that is to be handled. Burning or combustion, May, basically these two things are supposed to happen in the, uh, if the fire has to occur, burning or combustion, whether it is combustion material or uh, by fuel or any other uh, events it can occur. 
So, burn, burning or combustion can be described as a chemical reaction involving a fuel and oxygen. So, basically in the first slide when we saw what is fire, it is a chemical reaction due to the combustible material getting burned and it produces heat and flame. Now, basically when it becomes combustion, so what does combustion does is it requires fuel, it requires fuel and oxygen to create a chemical reaction. So, we can classify burning or combustion into two types. One is controlled combustion, another one is uncontrolled combustion, fire. Controlled burning combustion, this means which can be beneficially used. That means, we in the regular, in the regular days of our uh, routine, we do cooking, lighting, all the other things uh, using the fire. So, that is controlled, it is done in a controlled environment. So, which can be classified as controlled burning or combustion. Uncontrolled burning or combustion is something which cannot be controlled in a normal event, right. So, what are those which can get started unintentionally and can spread, which can spread very easily throughout the space. Example house fires, wildfires, it could be outside the environment, inside the building, in, in the outside in the environment like fire, forest fires, explosions which could be man-made or any other sort. So, basically which is uncontrolled by the normal activities. So, these combustion reactions are exothermic. Therefore, they release heat. Fire is a force, a hazard and a potential annihilator. That means, it can cause damage, very instant damages can be caused by fire, which can at no stage be ignored. That is the main point here. It cannot be ignored at any stage, but it has to be treated with anything but the highest priority has to be given in case of the event of fire. So, it cannot be ignored at any cause. It can prove to be a powerful destroyer, very, very uh, harmful destroyer if neglected. So, it cannot be uh, neglected at all if, uh, when in, uh, in any case whether it is uh, general routine or while you are designing the building, providing facilities for this. So, it, it uh, fire is something which you which we have to consider especially being in architects we have to consider during a design, any kind of design whether it is small scale or bigger scale. So, it can prove to be a powerful destroyer if neglected and has been considered foremost in the list of hazardous conditions. So, the effects once the fire occurs, we know that heat, smoke, light, all of these happens. So, fire is heralded by smoke and it is necessary to react right at the initial stage. That is very important. When we know there is a fire, right at the initial stage, it, we have to react to it to reduce the impact. So, necessity to react at the initial stages in order to gain control over the fire. So, that is very important. We have to control the fire before it can reach a large devastating magnitude. Damages in a fire accident are enormous and can be catastrophic. Immediately it can damage the whole service or a structure or a space. So, this the more than anything when the fire occurs smoke is what actually is an issue. 
as per the research in any structures or any buildings the most problems or life loss or uh, uh, damages is occurred due to the smoke life losses are ba basically due to the smoke which is produced so the first thing first and foremost is to control the smoke so the smoke the smoke is the combined product how does smoke happen it can happen through many ways so it's a combined product when the products of combustion through the because of the combustion products it can be created unburnt fuel is remaining for that any other gases released by the combustion combustible material the gases which is released by the combustible material and excess air entrained in the combustion products the remaining air which is entrained in the products can also cause smoke so when we see uh, when the fire occurs immediately the smoke is something which spreads out the space so how the smoke with respect to the time increases is the chart so while designing or while considering the um, building design the first and foremost is we have to treat for fire safety we have to design for fire safety and in that smoke is something which is we have to consider while designing so let's say uh, this is a time chart time with respect to temperature and smoke con smoke concentration when the temperature is at low level smoke concentration is also at low level even when the temperature increases higher level it is still lower level even after the temperature reduces that is the temperature of the space and the uh, fuel could have been stopped but the temperature of the space is reducing even then the smoke concentration is keep keeps on increasing so the growth rate or the development of smoke is always going at the higher rate so that is something which has to be dealt before a fire reaches the flame stage smoke is generated by the smoldering fire thereby smoke gives an alert alarm about the fire so once the smoke starts coming it's the alert which we have to assume that it, it to be an alert that the fire is somewhere occurring so before it reaches the flame stage before the fire reaches the flame stage smoke gives you the alertness as far as deaths from fire incidents are concerned report shows that smoke has caused more fatal incidents smoke is the ma major cause for fatal incidents or the for life losses than the fire itself even when there have been deaths in a fire tra tragedy due to apparent burns death would have occurred due to smoke inhalation and the burns and charring happening after after the death so the death even after even when the fire is there fire tragedy occurs death would have occurred due to the smoke inhalation so when the smoke is produced carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and other gases are released which is harmful to the human so that is the reason and we also saw the chart that the smoke in smoke at if uh, smoke keeps on increasing there is no reduction until unless we control that so mostly fatal in fatal incidents happens due to inhalation of the smoke we breathe the smoke which is harmful to our health smoke can spread much more easily than fire it can cause harm even at a distance smoke also obstructs visibility 
it could have been a, 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 all of us would have experienced these uh, issues that when there is a smoke the visibility is not there so which prevents or hinders escape from a fire situation so it becomes very difficult inside a controlled space or like a building or a space to escape from the building uh, from the fire event because smoke obstructs visibility emergency lights provided for fire exigencies should be sufficiently bring to improve visibility this is a design strategy where emergency lights because smokes are there uh, uh, smokes would occur so uh, in the fire and life safety design strategies emergency lights are also like similarly like smoke detectors fire alarms etc emergency lights are utilized to uh, light up the whole space even during the smoke so it sufficiently improves the brightness or visibility of the space so emergency lights are used to reduce the toxic effect of smoke inhalation a first aid support can be to cover the nose or a mouth with a wet cloth so this is very very important when the smoke happens uh, when the fire happens and you know and uh, we notice that there is a smoke all over spread and there is no visibility there is no way to escape some like uh, uh, when people are getting panicked the first and foremost things first and foremost is to cover the nose cover your nose and mouth with a wet cloth this is uh, recently there was an incident like um, um, uh, saying that in hotels and all they provide these wet cloths uh, to uh, as a safety measures so uh, so it is very important any wet cloth suddenly will uh, has to be taken up and cover the nose and mouth when the to reduce the toxic toxic effect of smoke inhalation to stop the smoke to inhale it can be done wet cloth which can be taken and covered with the covered both nose air mouth smoke from a fire has killed more people than the fire itself that is the major cause smoke is the major cause for the people to be killed right so in when we consider the build space in smaller enclosed spaces as the hot gases produced by a fire descend from the ceiling the temperature of the interior rises more than 100 degree centigrade within short period of time so in smaller spaces when the volume of the space is less and the area of the space is lesser as the hot gases and the event of fire happens as the hot gases produced by a fire descend from the ceiling as if, if you would have noticed that the fire would have raised easily above because of the temperature raise temperature difference so after that after a while it starts descending from the ceiling from the ceiling the fire starts descending first it raises and then starts descending right in the in the similar way the smoke also spreads all over the space because of the fire so the temperature of the interior can raise up to 100 degree centigrade within a very short period of time okay so in large spaces however that is with respect to small spaces but in large spaces the uh, event is same when the fire occurs the fire just starts moving above because of the temperature difference at the higher higher uh, height and uh, when the uh, fire starts moving above then again the descending of the gases happen in the small spaces because there is no much space to escape for the fire or smoke to our towards outside 
So, it is the temperature of the space increases very fast, but in large spaces the temperature rises very slow because the it fire has more space to evacuate, it has more space to spread on. So, the temperature of the whole room or a space can cannot rise so fast as small spaces. And also since the hot gases are fire spread out of fire spread out, descending gases are always cooler. In large spaces, the hot gases of fire spreads out towards the horizontal spread also. So, the gas in the event, the gases which is coming from the roof is always mostly cooler than the uh, small spaces. But in such cases, the toxic properties of the smoke are of greater concern. So, toxic properties of the smoke is the greater concern in these kind of spaces. So, the primary threat at distances away from fire is smoke but not the heat. It is not about the heat, it is mostly about the smoke which we have to deal primarily. So, in the effects, uh, once the smoke is there, why is it harmful is because smoke from fire contains heat and the products of combustion. The products of combustion are when something gets burnt or combusted, what gets released? Carbon dioxide gets, gets released, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and water vapor gets released. Carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are poisonous gases, hence smoke is poisonous. It can also cause irritation and co uh, coughing or eye burning can be caused due to these gases. So that is the reason we experience this block uh, which we cannot breathe in the fire and cannot uh, uh, its uh, visibility is less. So, the smoke is something which is ca causing the damage with respect to the health. So, the smoke toxicity is something uh, uh, which we have to consider. A measurement, what is smoke toxicity? It is a measurement used to estimate the toxicity of a smoke from a fire which is called, which can be called as L50 or CL. So, what is CL which means the exposure, CL is nothing but the exposure concentration of a toxic substance. Toxic substances are what? Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and other gases which is released by the combustion. So, these concentration when these are getting concentrated in the space or in the air are lethal to half of the test animals exposed to the space smoke. So, during the test which is done on the animals, so they are lethal to half of the animals which is done gone under the test when they are exposed to the smoke. So, that is the value evaluation for smoke toxicity. Movement of smoke, how does smoke move very similar to the fluid, uh, very similar to the fire. Smoke like all fluids moves wherever there is difference in pressure between two points. Then there is an air difference or air pressure difference from one point to the other, it starts moving. Smokes like all fluids, it starts moving from one point to the other where there is a pressure difference, air pressure difference. The most obvious force which acts on the smoke is the buoyancy created by heat which makes it travel upwards. So, this is how you can see that how the uh, uh, fire and uh, smoke can travel when there is, this is just an example. So, when there is a flame flames happening at the center of the space and uh, the flame heats up the space first mostly at the top portion of the volume. 
top portion of the volume. So, it can escape easily when we provide ventilators at the top surface of uh, just below the roof which is operable. So, the smoke and uh, flames can escape easily from the top layer of the building. So, we can see the first foremost important thing is the half volume of the space on the top gets heated up very quickly. That is because the difference between the air pressure at the bottom and the top. There could be many reasons why fire can occur. So, some of them are for a fire to start it needs a source of ignition, it needs some source of ignition, some kind of fuel and source of ignition and a source of oxygen. These three things are very important, ignition, fuel and oxygen to create a fire. So, what is ignition? It is the act of causing something to start burning or in the, the process or means as an electric spark, it could be electric spark, or it could be any material, right? But basically act of causing something to start burning. The process or means as an electric spark of ca causing the fuel in an engine to burn so that the engine begins working. There are different causes why fire can happen, happen mostly about ignorance and carelessness, carelessly thrown cigarettes, careless use of coal, wood, kerosene, stoves, piling of paper, furniture and other combustible materials, combustible materials or something where uh, has to be carefully uh, kept in storerooms, attics etc. which can easily caught up the fire, storage of kerosene, petrol and other inflammable liquids in inhabitable and unsafe areas. When we store these kind of kerosene, petrol and inflammable liquids, inflammable liquids in habitable space, that is when it fire occurs very very easily. It just spreads like anything. It could also be there are there are many many reasons few of them are mentioned here. Unsafe installations and usage of bottled gas cylinders. Nowadays every household have gas cylinders. So, it could, so gas cylinders is something which can start fire very easily, right? It is a flammable liquid. So, it is uh, very important to have safe installation and proper usage of those gas cylinders. Badly done, poor quality and overloaded electrical systems. Electrical systems are one more main re major reason why, why it occurs, fire occurs in the, uh, uh, in the building. Badly done, if the poor quality and overloaded when you overload the electrical appliances or the connectivity and badly done or that means when the low quality uh, or improper way of uh, executing the electrical systems can also affect on causing the fire. Excessive use of combustibles in furnitures, fall ceilings and furnishings. When the interiors are done, these kind of uh, combustibles combustibles could be wood also, wood we generally use for interiors and other things. So, these combustibles also can cause, become a cause. Those are few causes for complete fire. How ignition can happen? When as we saw, fire can uh, happen through three ways, ignition, source of ignition, source of fuel and source of oxygen, right. So, these are the causes of fire. So, in ignition cause, what are different causes for ignition? Faults or misuse of electrical equipment. When there are faults in the electrical equipment like gasoline, uh, like uh, electrical stove, electrical geysers, so, when there is a misuse or faults in the system, then there is a ignition causes. 
burning and faulty generating equipments, faulty oil, gas and electric heating, boiler and drying equipment, smoking, matches, cigarettes, static electricity, arson, spontaneous chemical ignition. Depending on different types of setups, anything can happen which causes the ignition. So these are uh, the, there's a few uh, there's a chart for uh, electrical fires. Electrical fires is again a subcategory on uh, how ca causes of fire can be dealt. So how uh, uh, electrical fire can be a cause is see in uh, electrical uh, in electrical layouts of a structure or a building, we'll have circuits, fuses and circuit breakers. K conductors and cables are there running all over and different connections, right. Now how these, uh, how fire can occur is, now say for example, appliances we use, different appliances for electrical fires, insulations, switchboards, switches. So now how, how electrical fires can occur is, for example, if we are seeing a circuit, electrical circuit done for a building. So, in that if the circuit is not earthened, there is something called as earthing done for an electrical devices, right. If that is not done, not earth, then there is a cause of fire, there is a trial load and uh, overloading. If you are overloading the circuit more than what is it, what it is designed, then there is a fire. Now say for, uh, how does it happen with fuses and circuit breakers? In fuses and circuit breakers, circuit breakers are the main, uh, fuses and circuit breakers are the main uh, uh, appliances used in electrical, uh, electrical uh, facility of a structure where it cuts off the issues like these fires and uh, uh, mishappenings of the uh, due to the electricity. So with that what happens if there is an absence of earth leakage in the circuit breaker. Circuit breaker when the uh, over current or over uh, power is over power suddenly there is a shock or over power circuit breaker cuts off the trip it cuts off the wire. So if there is absence of earth leakage when it cuts off the fire then the uh, when it cuts off the circuit, the uh, electricity has to, from the appliances has to reach the ground. So earthing has to be done for all the appliances. So if that is absent, then there is a chance of electrical fire. Then there is conductor cables. These cables which we use, wires or cables which we use to pass on the electricity, if they are damaged in the long run of the structure, if it is not encased properly, it could be damaged. So conductor cables, if they are damaged, joints are inaccessible. Joints are nothing but when we have a turns in the electrical cables, if that is inaccessible and there is any cut in that uh, improper maintenance, insufficient size of the conductor cables. It should, conductor cables always are designed based on the capacity of the electricity load taken by that particular structure or an appliances or anything. So if there is the size of the cable is insufficient. So all these can cause electrical fire. If there is a loose connection in the electricity, appliances mostly unearthed appliances causes damages or it can create electrical fire very easily. So all the appliances has to be unearthed, it should, it should be earthened, worn or damaged, appliances are owned or damaged. Now insulation is inadequate, inadequate and defective insulations are used for the cables. Switchboards, if switchboards or switches are broken, Isolation and control not provided if it is not isolated and or it is connected uh, uh, through every system then it is difficult. Control not provided properly. 
So the uh, those those are the factors which generally generally how electrical fires can be caused. Right? So factors developing heat in the electric circuit. Okay. So we discussed in detail what are different appliances or different uh, uh, um, electrical uh, systems can cause electrical fire. Now, how heat can be developed when the electrical circuit is something which we are looking at. Overload, short circuit, inline arc, localized resistance in the circuit. Overload is nothing but melting of fuse wire. Fuse wire or circuit breaker which I was discussing about in the previous slide. So, if there is an overload of the electricity, sudden overload in the appliances and uh, if fuse wire is operated by user, breakdown of insulation, this can cause heat in the circuit. It does, I am not talking about the fire, but in the circuit it can cause heat. Short circuit Damage to inst insulation at the point of short circuit electrical sparks. 120 ampere current at 240 volt raises the temperature over 1000 degrees centigrade. Localized resistance in the circuit. If the circuit is not securely connected, high resistance path causes localized heating at the power junctions. Inline arc breakage in the conductor when current is flowing causes sparking of temperature more than 1000 degree centigrade. So we are just talking about different three sources of fire. So in the causes of fire we discuss different general causes of fire and then electrical, uh, uh, electrical fire how electrical fire itself can be a cause for fire. Right. So now, uh, now for the fire, we know that there are three sources. That is, one is ignition, and another one is fuel, and then soil. So ignition sources we have already seen. Now fuels. How fuels can cause damage? There are different types of fuels which is been which can be discussed. Ignition of soil fuels, solid fuels. In solid fuels, solid fuels. To burn with the flame, the substance should either be melted or vaporized like thermoplastics or be pyrolyzed into gases or vapors, therefore wood or thermoset plastic. In both example, heat must be supplied to the fuel to generate the vapors. So for solid fuels to burn with the flame, the substance should be either melted or vaporized. What is that? Uh, activity happening due to the uh, substance burning, it should either be melted or vaporized. So when solid materials are heated to high enough temperature, their molecules break down to produce flammable vapors that can chemically react with oxygen in the air. So when solid materials are heated up, their molecules break down, their internal molecules break down and produces flammable vapors which reacts with the oxygen in the air or atmosphere. Now uh, how does it happen with the liquids, liquid fuels, right? So in the solid fuels the molecule breakdown has to happen, so in the liquid fuels it is a different way. In order for the vapors of a liquid to form an ignitable mixture, the liquid should be at or above its flash point. Flash point is something they take it as a measurement for liquids to consider whether they are ign uh, ignitable or not. So the flash point of a liquid means it is the lowest temperature at which it gives off sufficient vapor to 
support a momentary flame across its surface based on an appropriate ASTM test method. So, this is a test method American Society for Testing and Materials. They have done this test method to find out the flash point of a liquid, right. So, that flash point of liquid is nothing but it is a lowest temperature at which it gives off sufficient vapor to support a momentary flame across its surface based on an appropriate test method. The value of the flash point may vary depending on the type of the test used. The test we, sh we showed was developed by ASTM to find out the flash point. So, the value may vary depending upon the type of the test done for finding out the flash point. Atomized liquids or mists, those having a surface area to mass ratio can be more easily ignited. In case of sprays, ignition often occur at ambient temperatures below the published flash point. In case of spray, ignition can happen even at the ambient temperature which is below the published flash point. For flash point would be higher for that liquid, but since it is a spray, it can happen at lower temperatures also. So, this is one more type of fuel ignition of gas. We saw solid fuels, we saw liquid fuels and gas fuels. Gas fuels, combustion, combustible substances in the gaseous state have extremely low mass and require the least amount of energy for ignition. So now, uh, based on this sentence, if we are relating from solid, liquid and gas, solid has more mass than liquid, liquid has more mass than gas, but Combustible substances in the gaseous state have extremely low mass. The masses, the mass or the content in the gas are extremely low and they require the least amount of energy for ignition. Whereas in liquid, it is different. Uh, in the solid, it takes time to more time than gas and liquid to ignite. But gas, even though the mass, mass of the gas gaseous state, substances in the gas gaseous state is small, very low mass, it requires very least amount of energy for ignition. Just a spark would be done for, uh, is enough for igniting this gas. So, gases, gas leaks are dangerous, very, very dangerous and potential fire hazards since they can be ignited very easily. So, those are the different sources of fuel. Those, uh, so, any fire to happen need to have a combustible material and the fuel and the in, oxygen in the atmosphere for it to happen. So, now we will see how reasons for loss of life due to fire. We already said loss of life can happen mostly because of the smoke. Here we can see how it can actually affect. The majority of fire related deaths are caused by smoke inhalation of the toxic gases of the toxic gases produced by fires. Actual flames and burns only account for about 30 percent of fire related deaths. Actual flames, actual flames, when we say fire, in the first slide we were discussing about it, it is about flame and light, heat, smoke, okay. So, the actual flames which is coming out of the fire is uh, it can cause burns on the uh, humans or um, inhabitant, inhabitants. So, it 
accounts only about 30% of fire related deaths. This is as per the research. As per the research they say actual flames and burns are accounted only for 30% of fire related deaths and injuries. The majority is by smoke inhalation of the toxic smoke inhalation of the toxic uh, gases, right. The majority of fires that kill or injure children are residential fires. That is one major reason for loss of life due to fire. Death may be due to the effects of breathing the products of fire burning, principally carbon monoxide, CO, but also cyanide and many other toxic byproducts of combustion. As we discussed, byproducts of combustion could be different gases like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide. So, different byproducts can occur due to the combustion of different so different fuels, uh, different uh, combustive materials. So, which is released in the air due to the effect of breathing of those products, byproducts of uh, combustible combustions, there is a loss of life. Alternatively, death may be due to the effects of heat. There is one more component which we have to look into, heat shock. Most, most oftenly this is also one reason why people, uh, there is a loss in the life of people, okay. So death may be due to the effects of heat, therefore heat shock or the inhalation of hot air gases possibly related to the initiation of a vaguely mediated reflex cardiac arrest. So, during the fire, if there is loss, uh, too much of heat, it can cause reflex cardiac arrest, uh, arrest in few people, right. So, so according to NFPA, most fire deaths are the result of smoke inhalation rather than the burns. NFPA is nothing but a National Fire Protection Association. NFPA notes that every 20 seconds somewhere, this is uh, for US, somewhere in the US a fire department is responding to a fire, right. So these are the different reasons for loss of life due to fire. So we just saw the basics for, for how fi fire can uh, impact the loss of life and damages to the structure. In the next class, we will see uh, further uh, details of uh, different types of uh, equipments to protect the incidents. Thank you.